All right, so in this video, we are gonna talk about the 2022 CVO lineup. Let's check it out. What's going on, YouTube? FX Sales Brooklyn is back in the building. And yeah, I am currently not on a CVO. I'm probably on the complete opposite of a CVO, a uh, FXR from the 80s. <laughs> there is nothing CVO or premium about this damn thing. But the CVO models I thought were interesting this year and I figured I wanted to do a quick video just to talk about that and also get a sense of what you all thought about it. So yeah, let's talk CVO. I don't know too many people that have CVO bikes. You know, I know a couple and um, you know, they have CVO models ranging from the years of 2015 all the way to 2019. And pretty much anyone I know that owns a CVO has been pretty happy with it. You know, I don't really know anyone that's ever told me that they regretted it or has not been happy or etc. So now let's talk about the 2022 CVO models and what we think. I think they hit like a really cool place with the CVO models. I can't remember what year it was. I can't remember if it was like 2017 or 2018, but whatever year they were dropping a bunch of them in Battleship Gray, I thought that was a really good year for the CVO model. That was the first year they were really dropping bikes in that paint scheme and they made that paint scheme a really special thing. They had just come out with the Milwaukee 8 engine and they were offering this damn thing in a 117 which was significantly bigger than any of the other offerings at the time. Fast forward now into 2022. We look at the CVO models this year. Granted, you know, maybe I haven't really done all of my research, but honestly, man, I kind of looked at them and from somebody's perspective who never really plans on being on a CVO, I don't know, maybe one day when I have, when many more moons have passed, maybe one day, but also kind of never because y'all know my ride style. It's Dyna FXR till death. We don't really plan on riding anything else ever. But back to the CVOs, Honestly, you know, I kind of like, you know, I watched that part or that segment of the release video and I don't know, wasn't really that blown away in terms of not to say that they weren't really cool and special bikes, I think they are, but in comparison to previous model years, I don't know, just wasn't really blown away by what I was seeing. What I will say, you know, to kind of start it or to add something on a positive note is I did like the paint schemes. Specifically, they I looked at one road glide and it had that like really sick, that really sick kind of dark forest green flame job on the black paint. And I guess they're calling that, like, that's their uh, ghost flame or something, which apparently is something that's exclusive to a Harley-Davidson CVO. You know, they said in the video that, again, that's like kind of their own trademark thing, which I, I didn't know that, but, you know, if we're gonna talk about the paint and a premium paint job, if I had a paint job like that on any of my bikes, I think I'd be pretty happy. So. From what I could see, I really liked the paint offerings, you know, and then they had a couple other ones that kind of looked pretty uh, clearly inspired by what Jace over at the Fast Life Garage is going with his paint jobs. Similar kind of like geometric -y bagger Dyna Bro, geometric kind of design, you know, again, Fast Life Garage has been pushing out a lot of bikes with that type of paint, so it seems like that was almost the inspiration. The thing for me, that I kind of noticed about these new CVO models. And I was talking to um, a friend of mine that actually manages a particular Harley Davidson. We were having a conversation about it. And we agreed that to really set aside this 22 lineup of CVO models, the thing that we think Harley Davidson should have done to really nail and rail the point home that, hey, you're getting this ultra, ultra premium Harley Davidson set apart from all the other Harley Davidson offerings. The thing that I think they should have done is offer it with 
the new Rev Max motor kind of built out as far as they could have possibly gone. You know, because at this point, it's like you got your Lowrider ST, you know, you got your Road Glide and your Street Glide ST, and in these ST models, they're offering these models with 117s. So now, if you're offering 117s and your other models, I kind of feel like they just should have offered something different engine power performance wise in the CVO models to set them apart from what else was being offered, you know? And that's kind of my two cents, you know? Again, there's been years where they've dropped CVO bikes and I've been really excited and really looked at those bikes as a kind of standalone, stand apart thing. But my main criticism on the 2022s, again, is I really think they just should have went all the way and done something real special with the engine. That was, come on, buddy. You got this. Forever two wheels. He's wearing his helmet. That's good. But yeah, I think the move was to offer it with either a Rev Max or a 132 or something like that. Again, to really just set it aside from the other bikes that were being offered. But again, I don't own every, any CVOs. Me personally, you know, the sound system stuff, it's just not what I'm into. You know, I'm usually riding so fast that with the wind and the exhaust, I wouldn't really be able to hear anything anyway. So in terms of sound systems, I run all my sound and music through a Lexan G16. So that's kind of not a factor to me. So you're not gonna really woo me with like high quality speakers. It's just not, uh, in terms of a purpose-built bike, it's just not my riding style. But, you know, in, in terms of the paint, like I said, I kind of like the paints that they're offering, specifically the Ghost Flame one. I really like that one. But, that's my two cents on it. Again, this is a video. I'm really excited to kind of hear what you all think. Any of you who either run CVO bikes or know more about the CVO bikes than I do, maybe I'm missing something here about what makes this current lineup so special and what would make somebody in the market for a new bike want to drop that amount of money on this bike but me personally you know i'm, I'm kind of just looking at it from a outsider's point of view someone from the fxr dyna life and personally you know i just kind of wish they would have done some other things just to set it aside a little bit further in a very special year and again i understand like 2022 is not your typical year for harley davidson they've just dropped so many exciting things and so many awesome things that it kind of makes sense that something might get overshadowed and i don't know maybe this particular year with all the awesome decisions that they made and all the awesome bikes that they've dropped Maybe it's the CVO that kind of got overshadowed a little bit. I don't know, what do you all think? But regardless of what you ride, whether it's a CVO or if it's an FXR from the 80s or if it's a Dyna from the early 2000s or it's a new Softail, stay safe, stay low, outride your demons. We do have a couple hoodies left for pre-order if you're trying to order those outride your demons hoodies. We got them, shoot me an email or a message on Instagram. And on that, FX Steel's Brooklyn is out.